is a great opportunity for you, Russell. You must see with your own eyes where the teaching of morals alone will lead. Now, stay right there. Morris. Please be seated. I want to thank you for coming to our Wednesday night service. It's great to see all of you. As you know, we will be voting on some important decisions regarding our building program tonight. But before we do so, I first would like to introduce a special visitor with us this evening. This gentleman is a seminary professor and is visiting us from afar. So I ask him to share a few words with us this evening. Afterwards, we will continue with our business at hand. So will you please welcome Dr. Russell Carlock? Thank you, Pastor, and good evening. I must admit, I was very surprised when the pastor asked me to speak with you. I'm not quite sure why I, in particular, was chosen for the occasion, but I will see this as an opportunity from our Lord to share with you some matters that have been pressing on my heart. Friends, I have been away for quite some time, a very long time. It would be truthful to say that I have been living as if in another culture, a culture much simpler than the one I have been observing here. This is not to say we do not have problems where I have come from. We do. We know that all people are born with a sinful nature, and that all of us, like sheep, have gone astray from the Lord our God. And that all of us, like sheep, have gone astray from the Lord our God. And that all of us, like sheep, like sheep, like sheep, like sheep, with a sinful nature, 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 like sheep, have gone astray from the Lord our God. Amen. 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 However, let me say that the lifestyle I have been observing here these past few days has been at the very least startling. In the third chapter of Paul's second letter to Timothy, Paul warns us about the last days. Paul warns us about the last days. Paul warns us about the last days. In verses 1 through 5, the scriptures say that in the last days, men will be selfish, proud, without natural affection for one another, unthankful, unholy, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The list goes on. From what I have seen, the state that this society is now in reminds me of the days of Noah just prior to entering the ark, and of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Sin appears to be as blatant and as open now as it was then. Surely these must be the last days that Paul is referring to. The judgment day. And the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is imminent. Please do not misunderstand me, friends. I am not setting myself in a higher moral position than anyone else here tonight. I too have failed my Lord in many ways. 
fact, I feel partly to blame. In these last few days, I have come to realize how wrong I was in thinking that we could reform society through the teachings of the Lord without the Lord of the teachings. So here, we're telling you that the Father is different than the Lord. You're talking about the landlord, you're not talking about the Father. Gods require murder and death. Fathers, fathers look out for your best interest. There's a big difference. You're gonna have to pick sides. You can go with this one, or you can go with this one. Lord of the teachings. The Lord God who created all things appears to have been eliminated from your schools, your government, businesses, attacked in the arts and in your entertainment. And through these amazing inventions of the radio, television, and the movies, the devil has mightily planted sinful thoughts, ideas, and alternatives in the minds of the people. So much so that Jesus Christ and what he did, what he stands for, and who he is, has been lost. My friends, I urge you this evening, as I have personally done this past week, to first reconsider your own relationship with God through Christ. Please be abundantly clear that you have truly submitted yourself to Jesus and received him into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. We know that Jesus will not save any man he cannot command. And if you were playing a game of pretend with the Lord tonight, if you know deep in your heart you have never truly submitted to him, or if you're unsure of your standing with Christ, now is the time to make yourself right with God by calling out to Christ. Jesus died for our sins and to save our souls from the eternal suffering that is to come. One final judgment will come upon mankind and all those who do not come under the covering of Christ. And of the Christians present here this evening, let us take this time to renew our purpose and commitment to be a people who shall live for Christ and to tell others of his enduring act. I apologize for speaking so soberly this evening, but these are the things that are in my heart and I'm afraid will remain with me for a long, long time. The truth is, is that all of us will live forever. And we will either spend eternity in the presence of our Lord or in a place of darkness the Bible calls the lake of fire. If you have not, please give your life to Jesus Christ right now. Your eternity will depend on it. I've said enough. Pastor. This is a tattoo of the biblical Yahweh. Now you can see that it's 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 got boobs. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Carlisle. Uh, I'm sure that we will take what you said to heart. All right, then, as the men prepare to pass out the voting materials, um, why don't we all stand together and sing another hymn? How about Amazing Grace? Huh? Amazing Grace How sweet the sound that said a wretch like me I'm leaving you now, Eddie. Okay, preacher, you take care. I would like to leave this fine suit with you. That's really nice of you, but uh, I don't think it's gonna fit me. You're a big hombre. I know, Eddie. I was hoping someone else might have some use for it. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Eddie will find somebody who, who can use it. I also brought you this. Bible, huh? Yes, God's holy word. That's all right, preacher. Hey, will you look at this? It's in Spanish. Please read it, Eddie. Wow. Yeah, I'll read it. Yeah, I have your word, Eddie. 
If Eddie Martinez tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do something. Now, I'm going to read this. I believe you, Eddie. May the Lord speak to you. Yeah, preacher. You're a good egg. Vaya con Dios. Eddie, there's something I must tell you. Jesus is coming back soon to set up his earthly kingdom. The requirement, though, to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. Well, that leaves me out of that party. <laughs> no one is without sin, Eddie. Not one. All of us face eternal judgment and separation from God. This is why we must receive Jesus Christ into our life as Lord. He is the only one who lived a perfect life and thus became the substitute for our sins. For me, too. Yes, for you, too. He rose from the dead, proving he was God. And he wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. But we must first individually receive him, Eddie. This is what it means to believe in Jesus. Uh, you know, no one ever quite explained it to me like that before. God wants us to be reconciled to himself. So much so that he gave his only son to die for us. And it's all in this book, Eddie. I pray that you will consider what I'm saying. Yeah. Good night, Eddie. Hey, hey, preacher. Hey, listen, I gotta confess to you something. You know, earlier when I gave you my word that I was gonna read this book, well, I was lying. But that was before. Now I give you my word from my heart that I'm gonna read this book. God bless you, Eddie. Tremble and cry for pain, for the Lord's gonna come in his heavenly airplane. 